Hallelujah. It's good to be to be back here in, in Dagenham. Uh, as you know, I come from a city, uh, I probably remember what it is called, it's called Leicester. It's up in the Midlands. And this morning I want to speak uh, just a briefly about a man who's associated with my city of Leicester. And uh, because today I want to speak about the love of God. And this man really showed and demonstrated the love of God. Uh, this man, uh, his name was William, William Carey. He was born in a, in a village in the next county of Northamptonshire called Paulisbury and was brought up in the countryside and loved the English countryside and grew up to be a cobbler. But what happened was God entered into his life. God came into his life and God broke into his life in a tremendous way. And although he really loved England, he loved all around him, he loved the place where he lived, etc., God had something, a message in his heart, and that was he needed to tell people about Jesus Christ. But further than that, and now we're talking over 200 years ago, we're talking about a man whose calling was to a country right across the other side of the world, and that is India. Now, it's interesting because today we can go onto Google or we can go onto Wikipedia and we can read about India. We can read about what India is like. We can read about the language. We can see everything there. But in those days, it was a distant land. Today, Leicester has got a, a large Indian population. It hadn't got in those days. It was, it was so hard. It was hard any Indians there. So he was going to a country far, far away. But because he had the love of Jesus in his heart and God directioned him to the nation of India and that burning desire was there. He set his heart and he set his mind and he was determined to go over there. But to go over there, he would have to pay a price. He would have to pay a price because he was going totally into the unknown. So what he did, he set up a mission fund for him to go across. And he's known as the father of modern missions. A missionary is someone who's sent and shares the word of God with other people. Now, this is the interesting point, is that in order for William Carey to go to India, he had to go on a boat. These days you just get onto a plane and it's about a, a 14, 15 hour flight to India. In those days it took days and weeks uh, to go over uh, the oceans to go to India. And many people died on the way of different diseases which they hadn't got cures for. So he was really putting his life on the line. And he was going to a country which he knew absolutely very little about. And yet God had laid onto his heart that he needed to share the love of God with people in India. And little did he know that when he left the nation of England to go to India, that he would never return to this nation. But God used him in a tremendous way. Now how is that possible? It's because the love of Jesus flowed from him. And he was there and he shared the word of God with so many peoples. And, and to this day... He's buried there in India, and the Indian people have got a high respect for him, for what he did for the people. And why did he do it? Because of the love of Jesus, which is what I want to share about today. And uh, as I say, he paid a price. And the question is, when we know Jesus Christ, and when we have the love of Jesus in our heart, the question is, are we willing to pay a price? Are we willing to give put our life on the line for others. There's so many of us that just think of ourselves, we think of our own situation, and we don't think of others. Well, William Carey thought of others, and that is the great challenge for Christians today and people that follow Jesus' way to follow the Master's footsteps. I just want to share a quick verse with you, which shows that love is the main attribute of the Christian. We've just heard 1 Corinthians 13, and 1 Corinthians 13 speaks about without love, then our works are just like a crushing symbol. In other words, in God's eyes, without love, there is something vital missing. Why is that? It's because God is love. Hallelujah. 1 John 6.14 really offers a challenge to us. Let's read this verse to us. It says, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Lord, let's pray, Lord, right now, Lord, just going to, Lord, just direct me, Lord, just to share this brief word, Lord Jesus, about your love and about, Lord, how you can affect 
people's lives, Lord, how you want to touch people's lives, because you are love, Lord, and you can show them the love, Lord, that maybe they've never known in their life, Lord Jesus, and they can, Lord, see that you, Lord, are the answer to so many problems in this world, because you love humanity. Lord, I just want to give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, the, the question is, today, amen, the question is, do we, if, if we need to live in love, we need to say that we know God. Do we truly know God? Do we know who God is? Do we know that Jesus Christ was an actual embodiment of love? He, he was love incarnated. He was God incarnated. He walked on this earth. This, this Christmas we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Well, this baby that was born was born for a reason. The Bible says that, that he came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. He gave his life for us. But when he was walking on the earth, he was giving an example, and that example was love. When little children came to him, he told not not to turn them away, but come to him, such as theirs is the kingdom of God. He had love for, for a wide variety of people. He had love and opened his arms and welcomed people, people that were shunned by society, the, uh, the poor, uh, even the, the tax uh, the tax collectors. He loved them. He loved the, he loved the sinners. He loved all the people uh, that were there in his time. He extended and showed how much he loved them. That is the, the, what the gospel is teaching us. And how can we know this God? We can know, the, we can know this God by reading his word. You see, the thing is, the Bible is not just an ordinary book. The Bible is a book that speaks to us. When we open the book, the pages, uh, the writing, uh, the words are alive. They, they, they uh, minister and they speak to our spirit. They speak to our souls. I'm excited every time I open the Word of God because I know that God has got so much to reveal. And the thing is that although the, the Bible was written a long time ago, that it's still relevant to today. Now you look in many history books and you will not find that. You'll find, you'll find a history book and it runs in those days. But you read the Bible and it speaks to you today. Where you are now, where you are, what, the, what you're going through, the Bible will speak to you. The Word of God is alive. Hallelujah. Uh, so we can, we can have a, a relationship with God through the Word and also through prayer. Just every day, just bowing our head and just having a conversation with God. He's listening to us and He wants to speak to us. He wants a personal relationship with every single one of us. And do we know how much he loves us? I want to tell you something which, is, which might challenge you, but I know in this country, in England, and in many Western countries, we see broken down families. We see people, unfortunately, that have been brought up who have never really known their father's love, never known their natural mother's love. For, for some reasons which is not their fault, something has happened. There's been a breakdown in a family. There's been a breakdown in the relationships. And many people grow up not knowing really what family love is about. Well, let me tell you something. We have an eternal father. We have an eternal father who wants to, what Paul said, is lavish his love upon you. He wants to show you how much he loves you. He wants you to realize how much love he has for you and when we open ourselves up to God he opens his arms out wide Jesus opens his arms wide and he embraces us and we can I've spoken to many people that have given their life to Jesus and they they tell me that they feel and I felt it myself when I became a Christian that when God entered into my life I felt such a warmth of love that was there that, that you cannot get from the world it's impossible because God is the creator of the heavens and the earth, the universe. And God is really what it's all about, what life is all about, about uh, getting to know this God. So it's not just a question of knowing God. We need to learn, really, to rely on him. Now, what I mean by that, in a world, in a world where you walk in the streets, you walk in towns and cities, and London is a big one, you walk in London, a massive city of London, and it can seem such a lonely place. You're surrounded by people, but no one wants to talk to you, no one wants to give you attention, no one wants to, uh, to extend any sort of uh, 
loved you at all. But you can be sure one thing, you've always got Jesus. Jesus is there. There's many times when I've been in cities, I've not known anybody, and yet I've felt the love of God. You can always reach out. God, the, the, the psalmist wrote that I cried out to the Lord, and the Lord heard my cry. Hallelujah. And in these days when people are looking, who they can, can they turn to with their problems? You can turn to God. You can ask God. You can ask God, please look, I'm in a situation now. I do not know what to do. I'm come to the end. I need you, Jesus. He will answer you. Do we believe that this morning? Do we believe that we've got a God this morning who is going to answer our prayers? A God who is going to speak to us and reveal the correct way that we need to go. We have relied on ourselves for so many years and look where it's got us. I'm speaking to myself as well. Now is the time to open up to God. Hallelujah. You see, God is love. When I say God is love, the Bible speaks of two sorts of love. I don't want to get too technical, but there's two Greek words. One is charis, which is emotional love. And this em emotional love, uh, eros, uh, what this eros, this emotional love it is about, it is one that, that uh, doesn't last. It's one that we, we can feel. It might, might make us warm for a short time, whatever, but it will not last. But the love of Jesus is agape love. love. Agape means <coughs> sacrificial love. Sacrificial because Jesus loves us so much that he knew that without him, that we have no chance of going to heaven. We have no chance without him. The only way that we can receive eternal life, that we can go to heaven, and we can be sure that we are going to pass to heaven, is by giving our life to Jesus Christ as our personal saviour. It's by giving our life to Jesus. But he had to do something. He had, because the Bible says that we are separated by something called sin, by, by the, the selfishness, by our own egoism. We're all, the Bible says that we are all uh, sinful, that we all go our own separate ways like lost sheep, going our own ways. But we need to come back to the Creator. We need to come back to God. And it's only by giving our life to the, to the One who loves us so much that the Bible says that He gave His only Son to die in our place. It's only by giving our life to Jesus Christ and understanding that that sacrifice was for us. It was for you. It was for you. It was for you. It was for you. That sacrifice is a personal, it was a personal gesture that Jesus made. And that sacrifice is what saves us from being lost to eternity. Because we can be saved. That's what it means by salvation, being saved. God is love. And he showed his love by giving his only son to die in our place. He showed his love because in God, no matter what you've done in your life, you can walk around with so much guilt and think, how can God love me? I've done so many terrible things. But God wants to forgive you. And God will forgive you when you just come to him honestly and open your heart to him and ask forgiveness. God will forgive you. He'll take the guilt away. He'll take the... He'll take the the oppression that, that, that presses you down in this life. He can take that away. The Bible says that you shall know the truth. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the truth shall set you free. How many people want freedom this morning? How many people want to be set free? How many people want to be liberated of all the things in this world that bind them? I certainly do. I think we all do. But the only way that can happen is by giving our life to Jesus Christ. God is love. He forgives us. Also, he wants, he, his desire is to heal us. It says on the, in the Word that Jesus, when he died on that cross, that blood came out of his body. And that blood has got the power to heal us. That blood has got healing power. And uh, shortly we're going to take the communion. Well, that same blood, the same blood that this uh, juice represents, is exactly the blood of Jesus which heals us. Hallelujah. And Jesus... He wants to comfort us. He knows what we're going through. He knows the suffering that we've gone through. He went through suffering himself. The Bible says he was a suffering servant. He knows what, he knows what you're going through. Don't think you're on your own. You've got Jesus on your side when you open your heart to him. I tell you that God is real. He's changed my life. He's changed so many of our lives today. And we can testify 
to what God has done in our lives. I tell you something, no matter how much you resist, Jesus is there and he wants to come into your life. He wants to break into your life. He wants to release you and make you, as the Bible says, a new creation, a new person. So you can put away all the baggage of the past and come and say, here I am, Lord, use me in Jesus' name. Oh, I just want to uh, just say that, that God is here for every single one of us. I just want to give you all the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I think it's never, ever uh, too late. We need to give our, open our hearts. What I would like to uh, say to you this morning, if you really, if this message I've shared, it's a very short message, has touched you. And just think about the love that you maybe never known in your life. And the love is here today of Jesus Christ. That I can tell you, you can give your life to Jesus today just by asking him into your heart. If you want to bow our heads, we can just pray together. Yeah? And I just want to say that, uh, I'm just going to say a very, very, very short prayer. If you want to give your life to Jesus, just repeat that prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. I know I am a sinner. I ask forgiveness for my sins. Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I come to Christ and give my life to you. And from this moment, I will follow Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, Lord, I just pray, Lord, if anybody said that prayer, Lord, that you're going to bless them, Lord, you're going to show them, Lord, the new life that is in Jesus Christ. It says, Lord, in the word, Lord, that there is new wine in the kingdom, Lord. It's not from old wineskins, but there's a newness of, of life there, Lord Jesus. And I just pray, Lord, that we'll just taste that this morning. And, Lord, that your name will ever be glorified, Lord Jesus. Lord, and, Lord, we just give you all the honor, all the glory in your precious holy name, in Jesus' name. Amen.